now it's five o'clock. Thank you. Very welcome to this webinar. Me, I'm Annalie, I'm from Look Good, Feel Better. You can see me here. And together with me today, I have... I'm Judy with Look Good, Feel Better. So we are volunteering for the course and we are a worldwide organization that are in 26 different countries. And so if you want to find out if it's in your country, do go online and look for Look Good, Feel Better in whatever country you would like to see it in. Because we are in 26 different ones, so it should be okay. And today we are going to talk about makeup and we're going to talk about the 12 step program, if you see it here. That's the same all over the world as well. But this was in Swedish, so we won't put it online or in the uh, app because we don't think it's that many of you that know Swedish that well. So you can find it online. And we are going to talk about skincare in the beginning, and that means cleanser and moisturizing and dark circle under your eyes. And if you just let me interrupt for one second, uh, we would like you, even though you can't participate with us verbally, we would love you to send us questions. Uh, and all the questions that we do get, we will do our very best to answer within the time allotted. So feel free to send us questions. They will hopefully pop up on our screen and we'll be able to answer them for you. Yes, we already got two questions and we will answer them well, we, we, we can answer number two, huh? Should I apply makeup when I'm flaring up or having breakouts due to treatment? And both Judy and me, we decided you better go and talk to your doctor because it depends on if it's the treatment that's causing you the breakouts. If it's just small pimples or you're just feeling red or something like that, that we can handle with a little bit of makeup and concealer. But if it's like your whole face, you really should talk to your doctor and to see if you can change the treatment or you can just put some cream on. But we can't tell you that you should use a lot of makeup because that would be unfair to us because we don't know the cause of it. Exactly. So to get back to the 12 step program, it starts with cleansing. Because if you want to do a nice makeup, you need to do a good, clean base. And you start to remove your eye makeup. And also, you see behind me here on the shelf, that's a little bit of the products that you get if you attend one of these classes. Right now, in I know in the US and the UK and quite a few other places, they don't have any live classes that you can attend. All of them are on the web. So you are able to get your little bag of toiletries from some of the country, not all of them, but you check on the web and you will find out. In Sweden, we have live classes or workshops at seven different hospitals, which we're very keen on having. And it's so fun to see the ladies again because it took it was a long time that we didn't have them like six months or so yeah but that's due to covid we are hoping we will get back on track but as i said you start removing your eye makeup and i have some eye makeup on and i still think i'm not going to remove it here but <laughs> that i hope that's okay with you but what you do is that you take one of these cotton pads and have a lot of eye makeup remover on them and then you place them on your eye and let them sit there for like 5, 10, 15 seconds and then you can just swipe it off because if you start like, you know, oh, going like this, you're going to destroy your eyes and you're going to have eye makeup all over your face. And, and don't, be, don't be stingy, one pad each for each eye, don't go back and forth between your two eyes. Um, so. No, we don't want that. No, no. And then you cleanse your whole face. And that's also like, you know, give yourself a good massage. Mm -hmm. It's something that's going to stay on your skin. So it's not like something you're rubbing into your skin. It's on top of your skin. And then you take a Kleenex and wipe it off and you, or you 
rinse it off with water, whatever you feel like. You can have, there are hundreds of different cleansers. cleansers. Yeah. So if it's a milky one or you have the micellar water or whatever. Often we get a question, how about soap? Probably not a good idea when you're going through treatment. It has a tendency to be a bit harsh. And while you are going through treatment, you want to choose products that are very gentle, very neutral so that you're not causing any kind of abrasions or dryness by the treatment that you're, you're, you're doing to yourself. So try a cleanser, a lotion, or a cream. Yes. Mm -hmm. And be using peeling quite sparingly as well. Right. Because peeling can be really harsh. If you want to do it, just take one of those, what do you call them, forte? Uh, washcloths. Uh, washcloth. And then, you know, have a hot water on it and then wipe it across your face and that would be removing the excess skin that you might feel too. Exfoliating. Yes. Then we come to the next step which is moisturizing. Uh, we know from experience that going to cancer treatment it's a very common thing to have very very dry skin. So the answer to dry skin is not to have a very heavy cream it's more like having a hydrating cream and you can use a lot of it because you can put it in your on your whole face and then if you have dry spots you can take some extra and just gently tap it onto your little spot where you think it's really dry and just let it sit there and then you can see it absorb we haven't said this, but um, all of these steps that we're talking about when it comes to skincare should happen both in the morning and in the evening. Except for eye makeup remover. Except, except for eye makeup <laughs> remover. Um, however, with the moisturizing, you can use a moisturizer on your skin as often as you think you need it during the day. So if you, if you put it on in the morning and you're feeling great, wonderful, and then maybe around lunchtime you're feeling a bit dry again, use it again, reapply. Uh, there is, there's nothing but uh, benefits from using a good moisturizer, a good non-clogging moisturizer. And also, I mean, all the face mists that we have now, right. like the sprays, you can Excellent. have them in your purse. And whenever you feel, you know, you close your eyes and then you just spray it on. Especially if you're working from home, sitting in front of the, the computer the whole day, feel free to you know, spray as much as you like. And also we just talked about having very, very dry lips. That's also one of the side effects of treatment and getting sores in your sides here. Use cream on your lips as well. Um, yeah, a good syrup uh, that you can reapply time and again so that you just, you just want to avoid really drying out your skin anymore that the treatment's already going to cause. One thing I was thinking of when you mentioned the spritzer though, I know uh, a lot of women that I've met who um, may have lost their hair and they're using wigs. Um, some of you looking at us today, you might be from a hot climate, which we're not in Sweden right now, but uh, <laughs> no. having these misters and using them on your scalp as well is apparently a really, really lovely thing to do and gives a lot of relief from, from if you've had a wig on and it's, it gets, gets a bit itchy and a bit warm. So that spritzer you can use just about everywhere. Keep it in the refrigerator, cooling. Yeah. And also, if you have a very dry scalp, you can use the moisturizer on your scalp as well. It's so easy just to you know, continue all the way back. I think one thing we didn't say when we said moisturizer, though, is very important to have a sun protection factor in your moisturizer. Yes. Or if there's not a sun protector in OSPF in your cream, use a sun protector on top of your cream. And that should be 30 or 50 all year round. All year round, even in the dark years, or dark months that we have now in the north. Yes. Um, it's really important to not forget an SPF factor for your face. Okay. Then we come to the fun part, putting some color on our face. And we have a question, which is so nice. Oh, we have two? Oh, wow, lovely. Uh, uh, all of look good, feel better. We are, as in Sweden, we can't propose just one brand or two brands. Look for sensitive, for sensitive skin and look for the price range depends on how much you want to spend. And I would say even the cheaper ones are very good. 
So no matter what you what There's you so much information online, on different blogs. Um, uh, if it weren't a Corona time, I would say your best bet is to go to a perfumery where you could talk to a couple of different people. Um, and try a couple of different products but as Emily says there's there's loads to choose from um, trial sizes yeah. you can buy or like travel kits and then you can find your perfect match because it all depends on how much money you want to spend because here in Sweden you can get cleansers for like compared to US dollars for like fifty five dollars mm -hmm. but you can also spend like fifty dollars on the same on a similar cleanser oh, for the same function yeah. same function yeah so uh, i would say i i'm we we can't do that oops how do i i think you just <laughs> put it on here yes okay so now we put on some color and then it's about foundation and do you know oh okay don't wait yeah so, <laughs> keep going yes so foundation how do you try on your perfect color most people say you use your hand and you try it on your hand, but it's not very often you're using foundation on your hand. Do you use a lot of foundation I, on I your hand? I tend not to, no. No, I tend not to. so where do we want to use the foundation? We want to use the foundation on our skin. So ask the lady at the firmary or in the, your department store or anything for trial, put three lines along your cheek line, like down here three ones and then you ask for a mirror and you go out in the daylight and the one you can't see that's your right foundation because sometimes your cheeks are a little bit darker than your uh, neck but it will just go very smoothly across here so it's foundation you never put under your chin no you just gently tap it around so that you even out the whole thing around your jawline here so that's the thing try it on where you're gonna actually wear the foundation this is a good time for the second question we got yes the second question that we've gotten is about dark circles under your eyes and I know a lot of people struggle with actually covering up the dark circles and I think one of the reasons that happens is because we often think about just covering but we need to really think about covering and brightening. Uh, and when you can do those two things together is when you'll find that you get the best result. So um, after your moisturizer, before your foundation, you should have a corrector. Uh, the corrector should be in a uh, rosy pink tone, not in a yellow or caramely tone. Um, and you dab that on with either a brush or your finger um, under your eye. Uh, it's okay if it still looks like there's a little bit it shouldn't be you shouldn't be dabbing in so much that you make it go away you want it to still be there so you cover up the dark circle with the the rose colored um concealer and then you cover that with your foundation and a light translucent, translucent powder on top of that um, and if it's still very very dark you can always use a concealer and pop if you have yes like and a concealer that's also we are not talking about brands but a concealer should always be a little bit lighter than your foundation because light light colors lift you and dark colors like putting shadow. shadow or back and if you have dark circles dab on concealer a little goes a long way and dab it all the way up to under your eyelashes on the edge of your eye and then make it go down on your cheeks as well so you don't end up with the panda eyes that I call them because they are all white here you want to have it like it's just disappearing into your cheeks but I'll just show you I'm just gonna put a little bit of foundation on myself I haven't maybe this was too dark but yeah I'll, I'll use I'll mix and also you don't need like 15 different colors to cover your face you need like two one darker for the summer when you are a little bit more tanned and one lighter during the winter and then you can use it 
and then you can mix it. You see, I'm mixing it here on my hand. That's a lot of it. But then you start from the middle and you are evening it out towards your ear. So it's not gonna be, the heaviest makeup is gonna be in the middle of your face and then it's just gonna disappear. So you don't want the lines here by your ears. And you can always add on a little bit more, but it's so much easier to add on than remove. I'm just telling you, <laughs> this is fun. Mm. Uh, while Anneli is doing that, uh, another question that we often get when we're doing workshops is, what do I do about my red cheeks that I've gotten as a result of, of uh, my treatment? And redness is a really common side effect of your cancer treatments. Um, luckily, there is a really easy way to uh, hide that, um, and it is a color corrector. Uh, uh, color corrector things like you know the color wheel so that opposite colors are what you're thinking of so for redness you're actually going to get yourself a color corrector that is green now a little goes a long way so when you have this color this green color corrector you will apply it underneath your foundation to the red spots on your cheeks or on your forehead or wherever you have the problem um, and then you apply the foundation on top of that uh, as Annalise just done, and you'll find that the redness has really gone away. So it'll be very successful. Yes, it's a really good thing. Think about the opposite colors. So if you have different, oh. and then I'm putting the foundation first and then I go for the concealer. But if you want to use the concealer first, feel free. Because there are no rules when it comes to makeup. There is no right or wrongs. You do what you feel works the best way for you. Because, uh, I mean, I know there are people who think, oh, no, you have to do it a certain way. And I know if you do a very dark eye makeup, you might want to do the eye makeup first. Because when you are doing smoky eyes or things like that, you have the dark eyeshadow maybe landing on your cheeks here and if you have put foundation on it doesn't look very good because then you have to remove it anyway so then you do the smoky eyes first and then you put the base on and here i have a little bit of a uh, concealer i'm using my right hand again so i can really feel how much i want to put under my eyes i don't have really dark circles and also i can use this concealer on my eyelids. I wouldn't put my um, I wouldn't put my foundation on my eyelids because that's a little bit too oily. No. It's not oily, but it, it's too light and it yeah, just it, creeps into your creases. Your corrector is going to be more opaque. Yeah. Uh, so, but there it will are, give you that. It will give you that luminosity that you're looking for around your eye area. So it will make your eye pop out. You see the difference? Because I've got a really red eyelids. And then when I put the concealer on, it's so much easier to avoid it. And also, sometimes you have really dark edges here through your nose, and then you can put the concealer close to your nose as well. It will open up your eyes a little bit. There you go. Hmm. A whole new person. A whole new me. Huh? So those are the tricks. And as I said before, there are no rules or regulations when it comes to makeup. Do whatever you feel like. And also, I think be um, don't be afraid to experiment because you know your your skin. Even if you've been using makeup regularly your entire life, all of a sudden the game, the rules have changed. The games change. So you need to be able to to experiment and to play around to find find out what works for you in the situation you're in right now. Yeah. And then we want to get rid of the too shiny forehead and the nose and maybe the chin. So you just dab on some powder. Translucent loose, translucent loose powder tends to be best. Yes. But you can also use pressed powder. This is like one of my favorites it's a loose powder but you have to be really careful if you have it in your handbag to have the lid on because otherwise i had a disaster once but that was no fun 
<laughs> I can before. imagine what happened. Yes, the whole bag was full of powder. <laughs> and also, if you're gonna use a blusher, and if you're gonna have a powdery blusher, you need to put some powder on your cheeks as well. Just very little, because powder goes on powder and cream goes on cream. So if you have a cream blusher, you don't need any powder on your cheeks. But if you are gonna have, I'm gonna have a, like a little bit of a bronzing powder, then you need to have a little bit of powder because otherwise it gets all yeah. stained. So when you're looking at the products that you're going to apply to your face, you apply all of your cream-based products first. And then when you finish all of those, then you can go over to your powders. So you can, uh, you can use both creams and powders at the same time, but as Anneli says, you, you finish the creams by adding a, pow a loose powder, and then you go on to your other powder colors, like a blusher or a bronzer. Yes. Now I have a bronzer because I like to give it a little bit of festivity, and I'm using a big brush. And also, when it comes to brushes, they need to be cleansed from time to time, especially if you're using them on like wet products and wet products is like the foundation it's about the concealer it's about liquid uh, eye eyeshadow you need to wash them if i'm using a brush for my foundation i wash it every time and it's easy you take some hand soap and some lukewarm water and you just rotate your brush in your hand and then you rinse it off with running water. Then you take a paper towel, press all the water along here, as much water as you can get out of it. And then you leave the brush lying, flat. lying flat with the brushes in the free space. Because if you put it into a glass or a mug or whatever, you're gonna have the water dripping down and the glue is gonna come loose and all the bristles are gonna just disappear and you're gonna have them all over your place. So it's a good thing, lie them flat when you've washed them and then you can use them the day after because they dry pretty fast. And also, I would use only not natural hair from rabbits or horses or anything. I would do synthetic. synthetic. And also, if you can only invest in one brush or one little tool to apply your makeup, then a large brush is absolutely your first choice every time. Yes. Uh, this one you can use to powder your face. You can use it for your bronzer or your blusher. You can even sometimes, you know, hit it here with your eye uh, shadow. But a big one is goes a long way. And now I'm just, you know, for having the blusher on your cheek, think about two fingers from your nose and then smile. Yes, mm, smile. And you see the apple of your face, uh, apple of your cheeks. And that's where you start. And it doesn't mean to you have to have a lot. Some of you would like to start from from your ear and go forward, that's fine. You can do whatever you like. It's not like it's a competition who does what. You should bring it up to your hairline though. Yes. Um, so I like sure to, that you, um, I like to go all the way up here too, yeah. so. And I love the faces you make with yourself when you're putting on your makeup. Oh yeah, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the trick. Because <laughs> when we are having workshops too, when people are doing that, like the mascara, you can see all <laughs> kinds of, you know, so all the lipstick. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But that's okay, that's what you can do. Now we have a few more minutes, I think. No, we have like seven or eight. Eyeshadow, or even your eyebrows. On the back side of this 12-step program, you have the eyebrows. Where to begin, the highest point, where to end them, and how to join the points. So, you can, you can follow that, absolutely. That's like the perfect brow. But you can also, I think one tip you can have, if you haven't lost your eyebrows yet, but you're afraid that you might lose your eyebrows, then go ahead and take a picture. Make sure you have a picture of the way you look now. Um, probably your eyebrows, your natural eyebrows are not perfect. Uh, and probably they don't match left, right to left to right. 
um, they tend to be sisters, not twins. Exactly, they're not um, identical twins. Yeah. So uh, if you have a picture, a good picture of your eyebrows, you'll be able to recreate them and get the look that you have yourself. Um, but yes, eyebrows and, uh, and some sort of mascara situation is very important for people with lost. Also, for, for your eyebrows, if you start, I mean, you can put a pencil, a nose, inside of your eye and up to, you feel your bone here. That's where they're gonna start. And then you look straight into your mirror and you just move the pencil or whatever you have. And then outside of your iris, I mean the colored part of your eye, there is the highest point. You can feel actually the bone. So what you would do if, if you're doing that, you would then make a, a, a dot with your pencil there yeah. and one in the middle and one at the end where it will end. So and that you have a three points that you're then going to connect with small, the small strokes. I think I have one eyebrow pencil here. Yes, I do here. And it's small. I mean, you do it like this. Feather like. Because you don't want to draw a line because if it doesn't, it doesn't look nice. But if you can just sit here and you can work and you now I have my eyebrows, but you can make them bigger, you can make them darker, and then you always, almost always have a little brush on the end of the eyebrow pencil, and then that's what you do here. You just brush them. When you choose a color for an eyebrow pencil or an eyebrow, they have these little paint uh, brushes as well that you can use these days that are very, very good. Mm -hmm. Choose something that's a bit lighter than you would normally think that you would choose because uh, because of the treatment that you're going through, you don't want it to be too theatrical. Um, so it's better to go a little bit lighter so that it will look a little bit more natural. Um, so you want to you want to put those on so it mark it marks your eye and it creates the the, the illusion of eye of an eyebrow, but you don't want it to be overly done. Very good. Then if you lose your eyelashes as well, you do want to have some kind of, uh, what do we call it? Definition. Definition, yes. And use a pencil that is kind of soft. There are two ways you can do it. If you have a little bit of eyelashes, I think it's rather tickly, but a few of my friends say, oh, it really works. That's when you lift and you color the in between your eyelashes. But I think that's too tickly. Yeah. So I always go above. I go, from, I go from above as well. And then. As close to the lash line as, as possible. As possible. Without poking yourself yeah. in the eye. And not all the way into your nose. I would start like half an inch, one centimeter from your nose, because you want to start with a very fine line and then make it a little bit bigger at the end and also not drag it down because you want to have you have your eyes lifted up so you make a little like not really see here oh that's really a lot but you can always soften it um when you lose your eyelashes you're losing not only that which defines your eyes but you're losing that which protects your eyes as well so without your eyelashes, you'll find that you're getting a lot of, well, if you wear glasses and you're lucky, that won't happen. But if you don't wear glasses, um, you'll be getting probably a lot more dirt and dust and things in your eyes, which will cause your eyes to run and tear up a lot. Uh, so it might be a good tip to, when you choose your eye pencil, choose one that's waterproof so that the chances of it sitting and staying better through the day are stronger than, uh, than if you don't have a waterproof. And also, if you, think it's difficult to do the line if you do it before you put your eyeshadow on it doesn't really matter if it's not really even because with your eyeshadow you can make it even or take a q-tip and just smooth uh, smudge. smudge 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 that's the word uh, and also if you want it under your eyes because if you lose your eyelashes as well just Put a mark for like one half an inch here too, and then use the Q-tip and soften it in towards the middle of your eye. So it doesn't go all the way. We don't want them to be smaller again. We want them to be bigger. Open okay. Up, yeah. yeah. Open up your eyes. 
Oh, we have like one more minute. Any more questions? I think that might be the same one. Yes, it is the same one. It is the same one. Um, uh, and then what do we have more? We have eyeshadows, but that I think choose the color that you like. It's no right or wrongs either here. But sometimes an eye pencil, some concealer and an eye pencil will go a long way. And you know, uh, put on your eyebrows, outline your eyes, little lip gloss and a little touch of blush on your cheeks and you're good to go for the day. Um, so, so good luck. So I think we are up for our time. We'll just see. Yeah, it's 5.30 here in Sweden and we'd like to thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.